barn destroyed by fire, missing teacher ID'd, Evers proposed new water quality funds. These stories and much more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister, and welcome to Community News Review for Monday, February 11th, 2019. A fire destroyed a barn in the town of Lima Saturday afternoon. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department received a 911 call reporting the fire on Bridge Road. When deputies and firefighters arrived, the barn was fully engulfed. There were no animals inside, but the building was used to store some lawn equipment. Nearly a dozen departments responded to that scene. A Wisconsin gymnast now says she was sexually assaulted by Larry Nasser for the former USA gymnastics doctor accused of groping hundreds of athletes. WAOW TV reports Nicole Cassidy, a Kenosha native who went on to compete at Michigan State, says Nasser assaulted her more than 60 times beginning when she was just 14 years old. The first incident came during a camp at Michigan State where Cassidy said she injured her hamstring the first time she had suffered a major injury in the sport. You are in a gym full of other kids and coaches and being worked on, worked on in quotations, where his hands are in places that nobody's hands have ever been, Cassidy said. She later accepted an offer to compete at Michigan State where she says Nasser would continue to assault her. I mean, I knew that that was the treatment that had been done to me, but I didn't realize that it was actually sexual assault until the other woman had come forward, Cassidy said. Cassidy is part of a second wave of women coming forward in hopes of receiving healing assistance from Michigan State. Nasser was sentenced to between 40 and 175 years in prison last January, essentially a life sentence. He has since been appealed and for a new sentence. Autonomous technology startup Neuro said on Monday it raised $940 million from SoftBank Group Corporation which valued the Silicon Valley-based company at $2.7 billion. Neuro was co-founded in 2016 by two former engineers of Google's self-driving car project, Dave Ferguson and Zhujan Zhu. The funding by SoftBank came through its $100 billion vision fund, which usually picks up big stakes in fast-growing technology companies. Last year, Neuro launched a self-driving delivery vehicle to run errands from picking up groceries to delivering dinner and partner with U.S. supermarket chain Kroger Company to extend its services. The firm, which largely operates in the San Francisco Bay Area, said it will use the funds to expand its delivery service to new areas, add new partners, expand its fleet, and grow its team. Neuro has raised more than $1 billion from investors, including Greylock Partners and Gorgon Capital, which had participated in its Series A funding round. It's the news that Kathleen Ryan's family did not want to get. Police in Illinois confirmed on Thursday that the 56-year-old's remains were found outside her burned out car last week. Dental records were used to confirm her identity. Ryan went missing after she was supposed to be meeting her son at a basketball game in Northern Illinois. She was a teacher at St. Augustine Preparatory Academy in Milwaukee. Investigators are saying how she died and they are not saying if they have any suspects in her death. Anyone with information about the case is asked to call the Lake County Sheriff's Department at 847-377-4159.
Governor Tony Evers wants to borrow millions of dollars to replace lead pipes in older neighborhoods across the state. The Department of Natural Resources and the State of Agricultural Department would borrow up to $70 million. The proposal will be part of Evers' budget to be presented to state lawmakers on February 28th. Evers, in an associated press interview, described that portion of his budget as an investment to improve water quality around the state. He did not say where the money to repay the loans would come from. The Department of Natural Resources would be the lead agency on lead pipe replacement. They would bond up to $65 million and create a fund that municipalities could draw upon. Local communities would have to fund half of the cost of pipe replacement. Evers said another $5 million would be available to mitigate agricultural impacts on water quality. Evers suggested that the DNR may draw up a new regulation for manure spread for farms to prevent groundwater contamination. Evers also said some of the water quality initiative would speed up stricter water quality standards for the Wisconsin, Milwaukee, St. Croix, and Rock Rivers. Public health experts are closely watching measles outbreaks in Oregon and Washington state. It could happen here, Tracy Salader, an expert on pediatric primary care at UW-Madison says. The measles virus is easily transmissible. It is spread by respiratory droplets, and the thing about measles is it can remain in the air for up to two hours. The measles vaccine, when administered twice in a child's first year, results in 95% immunity to measles. So, in states like Wisconsin, where there is a waiver and parents can opt out of the vaccines that decrease immunity, it puts others at risk. Wisconsin is among 18 states that allows parents to opt out of the childhood vaccines if they have personal, moral, or philosophical beliefs against immunizations. And finally, the funeral for a slain Milwaukee officer is set for Wednesday. Matthew Rittner was a 17-year veteran of the department he was shot to death last Wednesday as a team of officers attempted to serve a search warrant at a Southside duplex. The shooting suspect, Jordan Frick, was under investigation for illegal gun and drug sales. He is accused of firing an AK-47 semi-automatic pistol through the door after officers opened using a battery ram. A forensic investigation says four shots were fired. One struck and killed Officer Rittner, piercing his lungs and his aorta. A judge set bond at $1 billion for Frick. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next time for another recap of our local news on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.